uh, and um, the cases give us a context in which to understand how what might be a very abstract and theoretical notion, Kant's categorical imperative, give you a preview of coming attraction. Kant is a universalist. He believes that truths are consistent in every situation. So that if telling the truth is a good thing, then you must tell the truth all the time. And any time that you choose not to tell the truth, you're being expedient. You're being um, less than true to, um, to the to to the, the philosophy, um, and you're, uh, you're ultimately not being good. Um, well, that's a great concept, but the strength of its efficacy is can it be applied to real life situations? Uh, and that's why we look at the cases. You know, some of the cases you're already familiar with, we're going to take a look at Martha Stewart and the problems she had with the SEC with regard to the sale of certain stock. Uh, we're going to look at Microsoft and its battle with the Justice Department over whether it was too big and had become a monopoly. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, a number of other cases um, to take what could be a very dry concept and uh, give it a, a practical context. The other way we're going to utilize the case method is you're going to write one. Um, we don't have a research paper it, per se, but we, I do want you to create a case study. And in the case study, you will be free to choose the topic that you have interest in. And I suggest you start thinking about your topic by going to the table of contents to the textbook and looking at the various issues that are covered in the course and saying, golly, that's an issue that uh, I have some interest in. I'm interested in um, corporate relationships in an international context, um, how, you, how you do business with people for whom there are completely different cultural uh, approaches to business, or maybe you're interested in the environment, maybe you're interested in politics, maybe you're interested in civil rights. Go with something that you're already interested in, and then in your case study, you're going to choose an actual corporation that had to confront an issue that's relevant to this course. And then you're going to write a case study very much like the case studies we have in the, um, in the textbook. Uh, all right. Uh, by now, you all should have the syllabus and the student questionnaire. Um, if you would please fill out the student questionnaire and bring it to, court, to class the first time that we meet. I'm going to spend a few minutes going over the syllabus. If you want to pause and pull the syllabus out, I suggest you do that um, so that uh, you understand exactly what the requirements for this course are. And as I said, uh, when we get together um, on, uh, I believe it's the 12th, uh, we're ready to go uh, and out of the blocks. So if we begin with the syllabus, the instructor, my name, Michael Einhauser. Uh, I've given you my office phone number. If you have a question, feel free to call me at the office. I'm not always there to take the call every time you do call, but in our office we have a, a protocol in which we return people's calls within 24 hours. You also have my email. Obviously in this day and age, email is usually the most efficient way um, for us to communicate. We're going to be meeting at the Oakland Center, which is a satellite office. I don't have an office there and I don't conduct regular office hours, but if somebody would like to talk to me, needs to see me, give, you know, I'd be, give me a call, send me an email. Um, I can come to class early, or what's more likely, we can stay late um, on a Saturday and be happy to spend whatever time you need face-to-face um, -face contact. Bottom of page one, the objectives of the course. I'm not going to read them to you, um, but I want you to take a look at them. 
We want to understand each of those six objectives uh, and largely, you know, how that happens in the interplay between business, um, government, uh, and society. We have uh, two required texts, uh, George Steiner, and it's the 12th edition, or is it right here? Somebody has already asked me. They say, gee, I've got the 11th edition. Is that good enough? Probably not. Uh, I have not taken the two books and put them side by side, but I do know I've been teaching this course, I think, since the 7th or the 8th edition. Usually when he comes out with a new edition, he updates his statistics. He substitutes more contemporaneous cases um, so that uh, I have no idea what risk you're assuming if you use a prior edition of the book, but um, my recommendation is you don't. I'm also telling you to get the MLA handbook. This is a style manual. It's not a textbook. Uh, I said the sixth edition, they've come out with a seventh edition. Um, so get the latest edition. It's available for under $20 at virtually any bookstore. It's a standard reference work that should be on everybody's bookshelf. Having said that, is it on mine? Uh, doesn't matter. I do have it. Um, but it's a, it's a standard reference work. And what it is, is it's a style book. It tells you that when you're writing for an academic audience, here's how to format it, here's how to do your footnotes, here's how to do your bibliography, etc., etc., etc. It is my, when you write your term paper, your term paper, your case study, I want you to do it in the MLA format. Okay? Let's talk about course requirements, the middle of page two. Class attendance, preparation of assigned readings, and Participation and class discussion are required. Attendance, does that mean I'm going to take attendance and it's going to be reflected in your grade? No. I am not going to take attendance. Um, it's obviously up to you. Uh, you're, you're, we are all consenting adults and we agreed to spend this time on Saturday morning together. So that's on you. I understand the vicissitudes of life and sometimes people aren't going to be able to attend. Um, that's on you. Don't send me an email saying I'm not coming, here's why. It's a, it's a, uh, a no-fault system. If you can't come, you can't come. I recognize that. I appreciate it. I'm not going to evaluate whether you have a valid excuse or not. If you can't come, don't come. Uh, but the fact is, you have to attend class if you want to do well.